forceps use in obstetrics has become a dying art. With most obstetrics and gynecology residency programs struggling to teach proper forceps application, most graduates are uncomfortable with forceps use in clinical practice. This educational video teaches the use of classic obstetric forceps. Learning proper forceps application through a procedural video in conjunction with hands-on training will promote patient safety and provide self-paced instruction. This instructional video covers the requirements for forceps vaginal delivery, their indications for use, the ACOG criteria for types of forceps applications, the four main forceps parts, and a video of proper technique in classic forceps application and removal. Prerequisites for forceps vaginal delivery include the following. Fetal head must be engaged and the cervix fully dilated. Accurately assess fetal head position and station. Evaluate the maternal pelvis to verify a satisfactory outlet. The patient's membranes have to be ruptured. Provide adequate patient anesthesia, either with an epidural or a pudendal block. Support staff and personnel need to be available during delivery and notified of the possibility of cesarean delivery. The operator should have adequate knowledge and skill of proper forceps application. Obtain a verbal, preferably a written patient consent to use forceps during her delivery. The indications for operative vaginal delivery include a prolonged second stage of labor, to expedite delivery in second stage of labor due to concern of fetal compromise such as a non-reassuring fetal tracing, or shortening of the second stage for maternal exhaustion or presence of maternal cardiac disease. The criteria for the four types of forceps deliveries include the following. Number one, outlet forceps criteria is fulfilled when the fetal scalp is visible at the enteroides without separating maternal labia, the fetal skull has reached the pelvic floor, sagittal suture is an anterior posterior diameter or right or left occiput anterior or posterior positions, fetal head is at or on maternal perineum, and rotation does not exceed 45 degrees. Forceps delivery is considered low forceps when the leading point of the fetal skull is at station greater than or equal to 2 cm but not on the pelvic floor. Forcep rotation of less than or equal to 45 degrees or if the rotation is greater than 45 degrees. Mid forceps is when forceps application is performed above plus 2 cm station but the head is engaged. High forceps is no longer included in the classification because it has been abandoned in favor of a cesarean delivery. All forceps have four basic parts. First part is the blades that could either be solid like the Tucker McLean or have openings in the middle and called fenestrated like the Simpson forceps. The blades possess two basic curves, namely, the cephalic and the pelvic curvatures. The cephalic curve fits the fetal head while the pelvic curve conforms to the maternal pelvis. The most distal part of the blade is the toe and the proximal part attached to the shank is called the heel of the blade. The shanks could either be parallel or overlapping. Mainly the shanks determine the type of classic forcep instrument. There are only two types of locks currently used, the English and the sliding lock. All classic obstetric forceps have an English lock. The other type of lock still in use is the sliding lock seen with Keelan forceps. Fourth part is the forceps handle, which could either be solid or serrated, 
to enhance the grip. The handles allow ease in applying the axis traction principle during traction. There are two classic forceps used in obstetrics today, the Elliott type and the Simpson type forceps. The Elliott type forceps have overlapping shanks, shorter blades, and shorter rounder cephalic curves. The most popular Elliott modification is the Tucker McLean, which accommodates round and molded heads. The Lucart forceps is another example. Another type of classic forceps is the Simpson type forceps. It has parallel and separated shanks. The cephalic curve is tapered and shallow, thus accommodating longer molded fetal heads, especially useful for patients who have been pushing for some time. Place the patient in the lithotomy position and ensure adequate anesthesia. Completely empty the patient's bladder. Check the sutures and fontanelles to accurately diagnose fetal head position. Hold the forceps in a locked position with the pelvic curve up directed in the position they will be applied to the fetal head. In a straight occiput anterior position, the left blade held by the left hand is applied first. This would facilitate locking the handles because the lock is on the left shank. With your back towards the patient's right knee, insert your middle and index fingers inside the vagina and gently insert the left blade posteriorly in a vertical position. Arc the left forcep handle toward the patient's right thigh, then bring the handle towards the midline. You can ask an assistant to hold the left handle in place. Now insert the right blade in a similar fashion. Hold the right blade with your right hand. Insert your middle and index fingers of the left hand in the vagina and insert the right blade vertically, then arc the right handle towards the patient's left thigh and bring the handle towards midline, parallel to the ground. Check for proper application prior to locking the handles. The sagittal suture must be perpendicular to the shanks. The posterior fontanelle should be midway between the shanks. Fenestrations of the blade should be equal on both sides and barely felt. Check proper forceps application prior to applying traction. Check fetal head position. Then lock the handles. Grasp the handles at the finger guards with your dominant hand while the non-dominant hand grasps the shanks. Apply downward traction using the axis traction principle. Remove the blades, reversing the order used during application. Remove the right blade first if the fetal head was in the left occiput anterior position, then remove the left blade next. Avoid extending your arms. Instead, keep an erect posture with both feet planted well on the ground, keeping elbows close to the sides, using only arm and shoulder muscles. Apply steady pull in conjunction with uterine contraction and maternal pushing. If the blades don't lock properly or diverge widely, Readjust application by lowering the handle while slightly elevating the heel of the anterior blade. If the handles fail to lock, remove the forceps and repeat the application. In conclusion, this educational video provides a useful, practical, and effective training tool for learning classic obstetric forceps application. The self-guided learning will improve procedural knowledge in forceps operative delivery without compromising patient safety. Incorporating this forceps program with a hands-on skills lab will provide a complete educational experience.